Well, hello there. Welcome to another episode of Construction Executives Live. I am your host, Jeremy Owens, founder of U.S. Construction Zone and Three Generations Improvements out in sunny Folsom, California, where it is a balmy 41 degrees. For us in Northern California, that is chilly. That is almost to the point where you don't want to go outside. For the rest of you in America, you guys are like, that is a nice winter day. Um, well, welcome here. Thanks for being here. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. All of those things. Uh, we have another great show for you today. I had a couple quick thoughts for you. Um, the first being, you know, this is a holiday season. We're right in the middle of it right now in December. And I want to acknowledge a couple things. One, you know, this is a time for a lot of us that it, it brings a lot of joy, happiness, um, friends, family, all those things. But for many of us, this is a, a not a great time. Uh, for many of us, this is uh, a time of pain, maybe uh, thinking of lost loved ones, you know, maybe family situations are not great. So I want to recognize that because, you know, we spend a lot of time with our coworkers and our peers. Um, for a lot of us, we spend more time with our coworkers than we do our own family. So it's trying to, it's time to treat them like family, check in with them, make sure everyone's doing okay this holiday season. You know, like I said, I want to acknowledge those folks that are, are not in the best place and just, uh, you know, we need to do better as owners, as people to to check in on those folks and make sure that everyone's doing great this holiday season. Um, what we try to do at U.S. Construction Zone is, is not only connect you guys as as an executive staff, as managers, we also want to bring you content that's valuable. And sometimes that content is is things that are hard to talk about, things that haven't been discussed in the construction industry. And sometimes it's content that is just top of mind because we all struggle with it every day all day and this is one of those subject matters today you know hiring attracting and retaining top talent uh the construction industry has not been good at that um, honestly maybe the worst out of any industry in the u.s today um so this is going to be a, a content that's going to be very valuable because we've all deal with it on a very daily basis and it's very apropos to our current society um, especially with us trying to retain talent trying to get new talent to the construction industry so we have some great folks at the contractor consultants here today to not only give us their insight on what they're seeing from the industry in terms of the labor and talent industry but also some tools tips tricks for us to be better as a staff be better as managers and owners so that we not only attract that top talent get them on our staff but keep them and retain them for a long time and please watch till the very end because at the end, the contractor consultants and their team have come up with a very cool offer, a very generous offer that I would like you guys to take advantage of. So please stay till the end and they're going to introduce that towards the end of the show. So with that being said, we'll get right into it. Uh, we have our, our guests here. We have two that are going to be joining us at the same time today. So let me go. Let me start with Matt. But uh, Matt Debarra is a fourth generation Mason who discovered his passion for the construction industry when he was just nine years old, working on a job site with his father. After graduating from UMass with a degree in construction management and environmental design, Matt embraced his family's legacy and established his own masonry company in Los Angeles. But as his business flourished, he witnessed many of his colleagues struggling to navigate the notoriously turbulent construction industry. Matt co-founded the Con Contractor Consultants as a way to share his passion and experience with other contractors who lack the skills, resources, or knowledge to achieve the success they deserved. The Contractor Consultants, uh, Matt also set out to solve the single biggest pain point experienced by all contractors, and it's true for me as well, recruitment. That led to the Contractor Hiring Course, a comprehensive, hands-on, results-oriented, online, on-demand resource specifically designed to help contractors find, vet, hire, and retain that top talent. We also have the Operations Manager of the Contractor Consultants, Chris Bloomberg, who has over 20 years of experience in the trades, from starting out as a carpenter in the field to working up the ranks at a corporate headquarters at one of the nation's largest home remodelers. As operations manager at TCC, Chris is always striving to help contractor, contractors succeed at growing their business and hitting their goals. A lot of tongue twisters in there, fellas, but thank you for being here. Matt DeBarra and Chris Bloomberg. Thank, thank you, you, Jeremy. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, you're so welcome. I mean, we have a lot of valuable stuff to talk about, so let's jump right into it. 
let's start with you, Matt. How did you get started in construction? Well, I started when I was nine. Um, you know, I had a lot of energy as a kid, and uh, my dad was like, "Let take him to work." So we're four generations in the business, and so great grandfathers on both sides: grandfather, father, uncle, and then me. And that old school mentality. My dad's like, "He's good. He can walk." And so I started when I was nine. But I do have an update to that story. I found this photo. I have a one-year-old daughter, and we were going through. I was showing her pictures of daddy growing up, and I found this here. That's me. I don't know if you can see it. That's me and a bobcat, and I'm about okay. two years old. So I was told I was nine, but this looks like I was definitely a little younger than that one. When my dad had me out there. Um, but <clears throat> I mean, literally, as long as I can remember, my my background has been on job sites, growing in the industry, and 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 fortunate and grateful to have been in it ever since. Awesome, awesome. What about you, Chris? Well, I was I worked with my dad around the house growing up. Um, he was not in construction really, but he was was very handy and taught me quite a bit growing up. And then in high school, I got hooked up with some buddies and started working for their dad, building houses, stick framing houses, the old school way down at the Jersey Shore. Um, and we built some really awesome big old houses out there and worked with some old houses and some historic towns in New Jersey. And I did that through college and worked with him. And then I you know, went out on my own for a few years and was the local handyman around town and did all kinds of kitchens and bathrooms and jobs for all my friends and family. Um, and I worked for a couple other cool companies over the years, commercial, residential, and I got hooked up with a really awesome company doing sales and marketing, actually from construction about 10 years ago. And I did in-home sales, face-to-face -face sales, in-home sales for a couple of years and got into operations, measuring, inspecting, worked my way all the way up to the corporate headquarters and worked with thousands of customers, team members all over the country for, like I said, one of the largest home remodeling companies in the country. So Great experience with them. I got hooked up with the contractor consultants almost a year ago now and uh, rock and roll. And I went from helping homeowners now to helping contractors. So on both sides of the game here. But yeah. I'm happy to be here. Both are a pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I always used to say that the job wouldn't be so bad if it wasn't for the customers, the project managers, the contractors, you know, but happy to help, you know, happy to be yeah. digging into the ditches here with the guys and finding ways to help contractors. It's been very exciting and awesome. Cool. Yeah. So what, what inspired you guys to start the contractor consultants and like, I guess, how do you serve the construction industry now? So it kind of, it, it started through a, a need um, and then somewhat on accident. So I learned in Debarra Masonry how to do this well, how to find, vet, hire and retain, but it happened with what I call the glass ceiling that I hit in 2018. So Simply put, in 2018, all of the things that I used to rely on, we would sell work at a eight crews, nine crews, go out every day. And there was a time I got this call from my site super. He goes, Matt, so-and-so's late third time. I said, you know the handbook. got to let him go. That's what it says. Verbal warning, written warning, gone. Right. And uh, he goes, small, small caveat. He goes, we're going to hit liquidated damages on this job. I said, okay, how much are we going to lose? He goes, probably 100 grand. And he goes, on top of that, we're not going to be able to do this, this, and this. I said, well, we need to have a meeting. So we have a meeting. I'm, I'm going to lose to the tune of half a million dollars worth of work, incoming work. I mean, it's literally, and he goes, when you fire this person, this one's going to go with them. And he's like, so this, I, before we make this decision, I can't make it for you. This is where we're at. And I remember feeling like I just lost control of everything. Family legacy business. I'm in LA. I'm working for the movie stars that I watched on TV. I'm like, I hit the American dream. This is it. You know, great grandfathers. They came on a boat and we did it. And I lost yeah. it all. Yeah. And uh, so I set out in 2018 and I said, you know what? I don't care what it costs. I don't care what it takes. I'm going to solve this issue because I was doing my postings on Craigslist, postings on Indeed. And it used to be that I could just get people. It was easy. I could call up people I knew. Hey, can you help out on this job? We're a little behind. All of that went out the window. And so I set out on this journey. And it really took about three years, uh, spent well over a million dollars, countless hours, and just said, I'm going to figure out every single way that I can do this. I called my CPA, true story. I said, what's the most amount of money I can spend? I'm going to put it in an account that won't hurt the business. They gave me right. the number and I was like, I'm going into experiment mode. And so that was the, the root of how we then learned how to systemize and create all of this. Very cool. Very cool. And I, obviously, Chris, you brought your experience from the from the remodeling side and 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 working at a, a headquarters. You probably come across this this subject matter all the time in your history as well, right? Yeah. Well, we were pretty fortunate at that company because that company focused more on hiring than anything else. So I okay. got to experience what a really great hiring company can do and the potential and the possibilities of great culture, great growth 
And then when I saw how most other contractors weren't using any of those tools and technology, I right. said, you know, I met Matt and his partner, Luke. I said, these guys are on to something and this, we can really help a lot of people. Cause I got to, I was living in the good life. We had everything we needed. We had the culture, right. events, everything. And That's I said, rare, wow, yeah. everyone's doing this. Yeah. It's, it's a rare company. That company really thrives on hiring. And I said, I've learned quite about it, bit, uh, quite a bit about it here. And I right. think I can help a lot of other people too. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's no secret that we have, you know, it's, it's in the news, obviously every day, labor shortage everywhere, really every industry has labor issues, but the construction industry has had this labor issue for maybe five, 10 years. So it's been, it's been an ongoing problem. And I think now, you know, I guess, I guess the question for both of you guys is how did we get here as an industry? And I guess, where do you think we're, we're headed in the next couple of years? So there's a couple of things that led up to this and, and looking at a more narrow lens, the big shift was when we had the great recession, 2007, 2008, we lost 3 million construction workers it went from 11.9 million to about 9 million. Uh, so huge shift. People said, I'm going back to school. I'm going to go get a job somewhere else. I'm done with this industry. A lot of people retired, you know, the ones who, who hit the dot com bubble and got through it said, you know what, I'm done. I'm going to, we're going to go to Arizona. We're going to go move to some warm weather place, right. uh, you know, yeah. Florida, whatever. And, and so that was the first shift. And then quietly in the background of that, you had just the natural progression of people retiring. At the same time, in the backdrop, you had a big push for college education, right? 2007 to 2014, 15, it was like, go to college. What, you know, what school are you going to go to? Now I'm a vocational student. So I went to a, a, a vocational high school. I also went to college, but I learned way more in, in the time growing up with my dad and at the vocational school than I did in college. But yes. so that, that caused a big shift. And then it really started to change right around 2016, 17, 18, when you had this decreasing labor force and you had an increased demand. So demand starting to get really high around 2018, 19, right around when COVID happened. And then it just exploded. Yes. Also, at the same time as all this, you have things like Uber Eats, TaskRabbit, Postmates, you have all these apps that are making it very easy for entry level workers to make a good amount of money today, tomorrow, next week, but not necessarily a great amount of money in three, four, five years because they're not designed for growth. They're not designed for retirement. They're designed for, hey, I need to make a little extra money and I can start doing it tomorrow. So there are all of these factors that just created this, this perfect storm where when, when COVID hit and, and demand just exploded, Right. It was like the perfect storm of us really, really, really feeling all of these things that were quietly building up in the background. Yeah, interesting. I mean, I guess what I'm trying to figure out is obviously we have an aging workforce. You know, some of those folks are retiring and we're still struggling with the young people, the young folks. You know, the vocational schools would be a nice add to our society. You know, talking mm -hmm. about, you know, the trades at a younger age would be nice. I think a lot of high schools still still don't have wood shops, still don't really talk about this as an industry, honestly, they don't talk about it. So it's like, it still is, it still is very heavy college or nothing. Um, so really it, that does start as parenting, right? Across, talking to your kid and saying, Hey, what are you good at? Like, let's, let's mm -hmm. figure it out as opposed to everyone's going to college, you know? <laughs> and I think that, um, what are you guys thinking, you know, in the next five to 10 years, that it, I know this is a crystal ball and we don't know, but where do you guys think we're headed as an industry on our current trajectory? I think we're, we're heading towards a very, well, let me explain this, this carefully. So I think for those who are willing to innovate and learn, like everyone listening right now, it is literally a gold rush. It is like having a website in, in the dot com era when, when this was just starting out, there's so much to be gained from, from understanding how to do this and do it well and being among the first to innovate it in your industry. So I think huge opportunity for those who are paying attention. Um, I think that as an industry as a whole, if we don't learn and grow and adapt quickly, we're in trouble. I mean, we, we need to be able to compete with other industries. We need to be able to compete with Uber, with task rabbits, with, with all of these, these different jobs. We need to be able to compete with college. And right now it, it, it's, it's a tall order um, to do that. And I think overall we're, we're in trouble. But with that being said, I think there, if you're in your local market, there's a lot of doom and gloom on the big scale, right? When you talk about things nationally, right? Yeah. You look at the recession. Well, there were great companies that were founded during the recession. There were people who made a lot of money. So it's, I think at a big, you know, macro scale, 
we're in trouble, big trouble. The numbers don't lie. The trends don't lie. However, on the micro scale in your local area, if you're paying attention, you're hiring while you're recruiting, the, you are literally embarking on what I call the modern day gold rush. Interesting. You know, I like, I like that, that positive spin on it. I, I think that, you know, we kind of talked about it before, like as an industry, we haven't done well with so many things, but you know, one of those things is, is just the hiring process, right? Just, just that part alone, you know, just not, not only finding one, but being able to hire. So you guys, you guys launched and you're launching a very robust 72 module course called the contractor hiring course. And this is a, this is meant to assist us owners through this problem. So how did you construct the course and when are you guys going to roll it out? So the course officially, I believe it officially launched today, right, Chris? A fit, like the official, official, official. Um, a lot of work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We'll, we'll on and we're, today's the day. Yeah. That's why yeah. you guys are a little bit sleepy, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, definitely not. Um, but uh, yeah, no. So we, we basically, we, we understood as we did all this that that it's a system. And so it's it's really five key components you have to have. You have to have a clear understanding and a strong foundation before you embark on this journey. Right. So it's it's asking yourself a couple key questions. If you ask yourself three simple questions, I believe you can break through what I call the glass ceiling, because we're as companies in 2018, I was in a glass box. The darkness was real. The yeah. the when I moved my elbows, what I was feeling was real. But the beautiful part was I could punch through it. And okay. so I think it's so it starts with I don't think I know it starts with a strong foundation and clear understanding. And then you got to learn how to find vet hire and retain talent. If you do these five things, you will not have an issue when it comes to hiring and retention and construction. But it's it's like baking a cake. One little thing that you do differently, one little thing that you add too much or you don't have enough of, the whole formula starts to fall apart. Yeah, and Matt, you kind of mentioned that you talked to your CPA and you went in this this little venture, right? Like so what what were you doing to find some of these things? Obviously, you're able to draw on your experience, which is which is super valuable, but did you talk to others? Did you did you research? Like, what was that like? Because I imagine that was a lot of research, a lot of time by yourself trying to figure this thing out. Yeah, it was a ton of time. Um, I was it was a dark time, um, <laughs> to put it lightly. I mean, when you in, in, introduced the, the darkness of of the holidays and some of the real things we're facing, it brought me back to that feeling of of just this this what felt insurmountable. But um, so the way the way we did it was we just started looking at. I broke it down into the most fundamental thing. I said, okay where I'm a company and in order to bring good company or excuse me, good people into our, my construction company, I need to have some things that are exciting, right? So I need to bolster kind of like marketing. I need to bolster what I'm doing. So what are the incentives? Why, why would you come work for me? So we, we have part of the, one of the courses we talk about, would you work for you? This is a really fun exercise. Anyone listening can do. If you go online right now and you Google your company, is there anything exciting that shows up? Is there any PR? Is there a career page? Is there a career video, a two minute video that's showing you as, mm -hmm. as the prospective employee, who you are, what your company is about? There's so many contractors that I've talked to and you sit down with them and you're like, you are the most lovely human being I've ever met. Mm -hmm. But if I don't see that on your job posting, if I see hiring an electrician, you know, $25 an hour and a couple of bullet points, I don't know that Jack, my electrician friend in LA, who's, I mean, this guy is literally the nicest human being you've ever met. Like he right. does such amazing things. I'm like, we have to take those things and, and show all these prospective employees. So having that strong foundation is crucial. And then it's, it's that system of where are they? So my journey was, I asked myself, where are these potential employees and what mm -hmm. are all the ways to find them? And who, so I literally whiteboarded it out. I'm like, who comes in contact with them? Okay. Trade schools, universities. Right. All right. Well, do are they gainfully employed or not? Well, the answer is most likely gainfully employed, but not always. Maybe they moved relocation. Maybe they just had something happen in their life and they're looking for a new job. So I literally I took it from like I call it the no stone unturned firing, uh, excuse me, finding system where okay. I literally was like, how can we teach and how can we do this in a way where there's no stone unturned? A funny story. I actually uh, went as far. We found a better method, which I'll tell you and, and listeners can actively use this. But I remember I went to my supplier and I said, hey, I want to put a billboard because I, I realized a lot of my potential candidates were going, you know, they're driving company trucks, my, my competitors, right. showing up, getting material loaded and leaving, gainfully employed, your A players, they have a driver's license, all these great things. So I said, okay, how do I get in front of them? 
So I asked my supplier and they said, no, no, that's favoritism. We can't do that. You know, we have other people buying from here. We can't just put your billboard. I'm like, but I'll pay you. No, no, can't do that. Okay. So I leave the parking lot feeling defeated. Across the street, there's a guy spinning a sign for mattresses. You probably uh, see what I'm doing with this. It's like mattress close out, you know, we're going out of business. So I go over to the guy. I said, hey, what are you doing on Saturday morning? He goes, ah, nothing. I said, no, no, I got something you're doing. I said, see across the street. I'm going to get you a sign. It's going to say top pay, <laughs> you know, masons and, and concrete finishers. Ain't English and Spanish. I said, I want you to do the same dance, everything. So he does it. I get, I'm not exaggerating, 17 phone calls in one day. Wow. Of, of potential employees. Now, what I ended up finding, and this is what was the beautiful part about all the testing, was that. I, I obviously upset my supplier. He's like, hey, I told you we could do this. I said, all right, all right, all right. How can I make this a win? So, so we said, I said, how about this? I'll sponsor coffee and donuts every morning, Monday through Saturday, from your busiest times for two hours. He goes, all right, now you're talking my language. I said, okay. So I said, I'm going to put coffee and donuts. I'll get my team. We'll, we'll have the booth. We'll deliver it. Right. Eventually, we came up with better systems. But, And I said, in exchange for that, I just want to put cards that say, Jabara Ministry is hiring top pay. I said a smaller version of what we call in the course a recruiting card, a smaller version of what you see on that sign. He said, yeah, yeah, that I can do. He's like, that won't upset anybody. And so if you're listening, that's something you can actively implement literally right now. You can think, what are my top three suppliers? Where are my, you know, uh, potential candidates going? But that's the, you know, the evolution is we don't teach you to do the sign spinner thing because it's not the right thing to do. I made that mistake for you, but we found the way, you know, we found the best way to do it. Uh, that's scalable, consistent, proven, and predictable. I guarantee someone's going to try that. <laughs> I guarantee. No, no, the side one. <laughs> yeah, back to the video thing. I mean, it's interesting because I have a similar experience in that some uh, some of my peers, I think they have great great businesses, but for whatever reason, their about us page. I don't. I think I have a theory on this, a working theory. Let me know what you think. I think they want to appear bigger than they are, so. They don't want a picture of the owner and the family. They they want to appear like they're a giant corporation. And I think that's for a couple of reasons. I think one, I think it's ego. I think it's ego related. I think they, they want to be bigger than they actually are. But mm-hmm. the problem is, is that people buy people. They don't buy the thing necessarily. So you're cutting out what people want to see. They want to see the people. They want to see that, you know, you don't look like a creep. They want to see that you have a history. They want to see that you coach soccer, you know? And, and like, so I don't understand why, you know, why that's been out of people's websites and the retaining part and finding part. Why do you think that is? Is my theory spot on or maybe? It's funny. Uh, yeah, go ahead, yeah. It's funny that you, that you say that. Cause when I worked for the largest company in the country doing home remodeling, they would, they would say, don't talk about that. Just talk about the local office. And, and how the local office, what we're involved with locally and how the local team is a part of the community. And that's what more, when I was in home doing in-home sales face to face, that's what people responded to. They right. didn't want to be sold by the largest, you know, a big corporate company. Right. They want a local company with a local office where they know if they call or if they want to go down there, they can talk to someone. And right. that was, that was key. And I talked to so many contractors and they all want to have a family feel and they're scared of a corporate feel, a lot of them, um, because it feels a little too big for their britches maybe, but it's it's definitely a good thing to have your face and career video and your family. And when we do audits, you know, for, for competitors, you'd be surprised how many companies aren't using those. And when you see the successful ones, they have the career videos in place and they're they're right. engaging with people on a personal level. And it's really nice to see. It gives it a really nice touch. Yeah. We have that in the course. We, we talk about basically authentic messaging. So it's part of that clear understanding and strong foundation, but it's saying if you're the worst thing, one of the worst things we can do in in hiring is we can misrepresent in the beginning, because then if you do that, they're expecting certain things. It's like, well, you're this big company. What do you mean? I don't get a 401k, right? Or you're, what do you mean? I don't have this. You're not going to have a fruit bowl in the office. All big companies do that, right? So you, you start to create these incongruencies. And so we talk about the importance of authentic messaging and saying, I think in the course, we even have a a section where we're like, look, if you're somebody who keeps a coffee cup on your desk and paper scattered, and you're going to have someone come in for an interview, don't make your desk look like it's not going to look for the rest of the time. Like, like the more authentic you can be because you're, you're essentially selling this potential candidate on a long-term relationship. And that's, what's so beautiful about hiring versus sales. 
right? There's no sale that'll change your business as much as one great hire will. We, we could all be one great hire away. And so it's creating that consistency. And, and, and what you said, Jeremy, is so insightful because it's so true. Um, the authenticity as to who you are, if you're a small company, if you're one or two people, if you're an owner operator, if you're in the field, you have to show that. I mean, you have right. to, that, cause that's ultimately what they're buying. So whether, whether they see it on the front end, if that's a turn off to them, let them figure that out early on. You don't waste your time. Right. Right. Yeah. Setting expectations, right. I mean, how many times that, you know, Chris, for you being in home, in home sales, if you overcommit and under deliver, that's a recipe for freaking disaster. So that's but, what on the tip of my problem. tongue. Over promise, <laughs> under deliver, do not set the proper expectations from the beginning. You, you set yourself up for failure. Totally, totally. So might as well just be honest, right? And then, so yeah. on these five steps, you have the clear understanding and then describe the next one, which is find. Yeah, I call it the, the no stone unturned finding system. So basically what, what we did is we said, look, there's no, one of the biggest fallacies in this in this industry that I found and, and I, I saw, I was speaking at RoofCon, 2000 contractors and we're on a panel, there's seven of us. And everybody's, it was so fascinating. Everyone's given different tips, right? And you could see their backgrounds as to why they gave a tip. One's like more, oh, you need to have a really strong, compelling headline. The other ones you need to this. The, the truth of the matter is you need to do all of them. There's no, yeah. there's no guarantee, right? It's almost like if you think of marketing, if I had a, a marketing method and I could put a dollar in and get $2 out and I have another method where I could put a dollar in and get $3 out, would you stop the one to two? The answer is no, of course not. You'd continue to do all of them. It's profitable. It's good. So, you know, we, we look at all the different ways you can find candidates from digital strategies, which are newer and cutting edge. Like uh, one off the top of my head is geofencing. It's where you can put an invisible fence around your competitors um, and you can actually show them if they walk into that building, you're hiring ads. So it's digital, it's cutting edge and it's really, really unique. Um, and then, but there's, there's tried and true methods. Like I just gave the coffee uh, the coffee table example. I mean, these are simple. I mean, it cost me probably 30 bucks a day, you right. know, to get in front of literally my ideal candidate. And I'm just waiting for that one day that the boss said, Hey, you were supposed to be here at seven o'clock at seven Oh one. And he, they're driving in to get their coffee, looking down going, Hey, you know, there's, there's a better way here. Um, and, and even recruiter cards. So these are cards that I carry, um, and that all of our, our clients carry. And we talk about this in the course, how to design it, what to put on it. But it's basically a card that has your information, your hiring, and what incentives they get. And uh, it, I mean, it's extremely powerful. I mean, we've had people find their hires from, you know, uh, being at a restaurant with their family, you know, church right. or any of these outings where, you know, you, oh, my nephew just moved here. Oh, really? Well, you know, we have an incentive. It's just so simple. So when right. you, you have to check all the boxes, though, in order for you, because in this climate, there's no one system that's going to get or no one method that's going to get you what you want. That's why I call it the no stone right. unturned finding method because you can't rely on just one right i mean it's so true right it's like this is what frustrates me about this problem is that we've known we've had this problem for a long time as an industry and we always want others to solve it for us right we always want the government or we want a program that just filters spits out these candidates right we want it right in front of us but you know to, to have like a recruiter card like it's a great idea and it's not hard but it's just something that seems so challenging for so many people. Like, what? what? I don't. I just, that's that's too much time. Well, then, then what are you talking about? Then you, then you, your problem's not big enough. You know what I mean? So it, I, it gets frustrating when people want it handed it to them as opposed to having these strategies in place to go find it yourself. Hmm. The, the average recruiter for for construction, the average recruiter makes about fifteen to eighteen thousand dollars per placement. You can Google in your your local area, wherever you live, if you're listening construction recruiter, you're going to find the first 10 pages filled with them. Why are they there? They prey on companies. Okay. And we talk about how to use recruiters in the course. Sometimes they're a necessary evil, uh, yeah. but they prey on the ability. They prey on, on us contractors, not planning ahead, not using these methods, not like you're saying, going and printing out a recruiting card. They're, they're there when they're like, Hey, when, you know, when things hit the fan, we'll, we'll come and do it. And we're going to charge you 20 grand for it. Um, and, and maybe find them, maybe not. So yeah, I think it's so important to just do these little things. And the nice part is, is they're little, it's a bunch of small things. Like for example, uh, one other one that I'd love uh, anyone listening to, to implement is incentivizing your team. You can actually deputize your team members. So we've, we've created a structure where essentially you, you ask yourself, well, what, what is it worth to you? You know, is it $300, $500, is a thousand dollars? What would you pay to have that position? And then have a meeting with your team and say, Hey, look, 
we're hiring XYZ. Any one of you here are great. Anyone you're associated with, we would love to interview. Here's the incentive if we bring them in. And now if you have a team, even if it's three, four, five people, seven people, you've done two things. Number one, you've made everyone feel great. You said, look, you're amazing. I wanna basically clone you. That's why I wanna work with your network. So it's a lift up for culture and retention. But not only that, you're incentivizing your team to go to work. So now when they're, you're, you're hiring at scale. You're not doing all the heavy lifting. So it's it's how do we create leverage? The coffee example is leverage. The recruiter card example is leverage. The example of deputizing your team and getting them to do the work for you is all leverage based. And so that's really what we're looking about. It's how do I create leverage in all of these different areas? And when you cast enough, you know, cast enough, uh, uh, you know, lines in the water, eventually you're going to get bites as long as you're right. in the right pond with the right bait. Mm-hmm. Right. Totally. I mean, my roots in the industry, like a lot like you, Matt, I mean, you, you could probably get, go back further 1956 and you know, you, you talked about some old school methods already. And I think back in the day, you know, networking for them was always person to person, right? I mean, you didn't have, you know, I talk about it all the time. You had a Rolodex, right. And you had a phone, not a cell phone. So um, a lot of times you had these events where you had that skin to skin contact that was the same thing that you're talking about with your staff. That is how you found somebody else is you ask people, Hey, this is what I'm looking for. You know, anybody like, cause think about it. How else would you do it? Like the, even, yeah. even putting an ad in the paper was not, was not an option for, for many folks. So talk about some of those old school methods that really, I think we need to get back to in a lot of ways. Yeah. Referral bonuses are key. I got my job at the corporate company cause my friend referred me. And referrals had the, had a longer retention and performed at a higher level, not because they were just, Hey, my buddy, but because my referral who referred me mentored me and we worked mm-hmm. together and he supported me and he knew at 90 days, if I was there in 90 days, we would both get a bonus. So it created like a team, you know, and then the more people you refer, you get an even bigger team and it spreads out and spreads out. And then it's just like a community of like, Hey, I know you, Hey, you're my friend. And everybody's referring people and they're getting bonuses and everybody's happy about it. And there was some people at my last company had like a second income because they would find 15, 20 people every year and they would have a bonus bigger than some people's salaries. Right. So referral bonuses are huge, huge to take advantage of. Yeah. 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 What about you, Matt? Do you have any other old school thoughts there? Oh, there's tons. I mean, my, my favorite is is to mix the old school with the new school too. So like we have a lot of like we have a lot of old school methods that have like a little kind of modern right. cherry on top, if you will. So so yeah. one example of that is stopping in on job sites. You drive, you drive and you see job sites and you you stop in and especially if it's work you're doing. But a lot of these building permits and a lot of this work is actually public record. And so you can look this stuff up. You can say, okay, I'm a, I'm a roofer or I'm an electrician. Well, Mm -hmm. I want to do this type of work. Well, you can actually pull online and, and, and look for open permits of that type of work. And then you can drive to that address and actually, you know, for the specific type of work that you're looking for and pop in. Um, that's the old school stuff. A lot of it is, is other people in the industry too. So, uh, if you're, if you're like, for example, us masonry concrete, we work around carpenters, electricians. If you're looking entry level, those people there, there may be a carpenter and he passes up on a, on somebody cause we're all, we're all hiring in some capacity. Right. So your, your, your complimentary trades can actually do work for you too. You can take that same incentive and work with them and say, Hey, through your hiring process, if you come across anybody, right. typically it's better on the entry level side, right? Because if, if, if a carpenter is hiring uh, for a skilled carpenter and I'm not, and I'm an electrician, I'm, I'm the likelihood that it's like, Oh, this master electrician applied for my, you know, yeah. I know. Uh, yeah. high, high skill carpentry job, not so much, but on the entry level, how do we get entry level workers in and excited? You can do that through deputizing or incentivizing, as Chris said, your other workers that you work with. So it's, it's really a lot of simple things that are, if done well, right? What's the incentive mm-hmm. you offer? How do you approach them? You know, when do you follow up with them? There's like these certain little levers that you have to pull in addition to the concept for it to really maximize. But yeah, I mean, none of it's rocket science. And the beautiful part is none of it takes a ton of time. It's just little, little outputs of effort sporadically yeah. in the right place. What are, what are you finding as some good incentives? What, what moves the needle for, for a lot of folks, for, especially for your, your own staff? Yeah, you know, the, the funny thing is we, we talk about this in the course is it's, it's based on the person. So I, I um, early on when we were building out this, like, and I was using this grassroots, <clears throat> I, had a, uh, I, was at, I was at the doctor's office. And uh, I was just doing like a routine checkup and I'm talking to the, the male nurse and I could see he had a Dodgers keychain. So 
He's telling me about how his cousin just moved here. He's a young kid. He's got a lot of energy. We're trying to figure out what to do with him. I said, well, we're hiring. I said, and you know, if, if it did work out, I said, we, we heavily incentivize it. And I said, well, I don't, you know, maybe like Dodger tickets, something like that. If you can make it happen. Right. He goes, you're kidding. I said, yeah, yeah. I was like, if, if this works, you know, I'd be happy to, if you have a certain seat that you like, or he's like, I love the Dodgers and I could seek from the keychain. And so yeah. I think the key here, the biggest takeaway is how do you do it in a way where it's unique to the, to the, to the person? Cause if you can personalize it to them, some people it's money, you know, it's, it's 200 bucks, 300 bucks cash that, that yeah. never fails, but taking a more personalized approach and asking yeah. them, Hey, is it a sports game? Is it a night out with your wife? Is it a massage? Like what, what would make you really, what would motivate you? To want to go out and do this, 100%. right? What does that look like? And it's just ask. Yeah, it's sales. You have to listen and then cater to the person that you're listening to. Right. Whatever they're yeah. interested, you know, you just have to pick up on that and oh, I'll put that in my yeah. pocket later. It reminds me of like just like you, Matt. I went with right alongs with my dad, so he would walk into someone's home and he would like be looking around. And I'm like, what are you doing? He was looking on the walls and looking at shit to to be able to bring, bring up. something up, Chris. Bring up. Like, do a warm up. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, I, I see that you love what, uh, lighthouses. I was on a lighthouse. Like, so it's like just a, a <laughs> nice break here, but it's just something to, to start the conversation. But so true. I mean, all these things are like, like you said, they're, they're not rocket science, but it just seems like so many of us go and put an ad somewhere, you know, pick your place. You put an ad in and you call it good. What, what are, I guess, and what are some of the challenges there? Are people even going there? Is your talent even going to those websites to even look at your ads? They they are. It's it's the biggest takeaway is is knowing how to do things well in a proven process. Because if you just go in and you write, "I'm hiring," like I can't tell you the amount of headline testing we've done, the amount of ad, basically the body of the ad we've done. Um, and we found these levers that actually work. And so the career video is huge because yeah. seeing that two minute video, um, is absolutely crucial. Also, um, one of the simplest ways, and this is an, an actionable one that anyone listening can do is so imagine for a moment you're in a company and you say, okay, I have a, it could be sales. It could be in the field, but you've got an A player. We call an A player. And you say, if I could, I ask the way we, we ask is we say, who would you want to clone in your company? If you had a cloning machine, who would you clone? All right. Well, great. So we want to go and hire that person. So the easiest thing to do is write the ad out the way you typically know, obviously in the course we teach you, you know, how to, how to do it and structure it, headline the whole nine, but right. you write the ad out and then you sit down with this person you say, Hey, would you click this headline? If you're right. on indeed, or you're on, you know, whatever it is, Craigslist, would, does this excite you? And what we found is for example, in sales positions, if you put the pay in the headline, you're going to notice, give them two examples, hiring, you know, hiring salesperson for XYZ company or whatever. If you take that headline and you put it next to hiring salesperson, make up to 120 K a year. And you say, which one of these would you click? Because they're potentially money motivated. They go, Oh no, I would definitely 120 grand. That's great. I would click that one. And so now you're doing testing, but it's so simple because you're taking the people that, so you have them read it and you say, what, what would excite you about working here? Or what do you enjoy about working here most? And so now you can take those nuggets and embed them in the ad. And now you're putting that ad, you're, you're amplifying everything you do. And I think that's why I'm so excited about the course is because we've done all that, that testing where essentially we've done that heavy lifting because you can have a 10 times higher pull rate from an ad just based on doing a simple exercise like this. Yeah. Yeah. Makes total sense. You know, after you have that clear understanding, you find them, how do you go ahead and vet them? Well, well, so this is where we kind of this is where we kind of realized the system part because now that you've got your finding process is so robust and you have all these people, you have to be able to sift, sort, and screen quickly. So yeah. Yeah. we developed ways, you know, a few questions that you can ask uh, for what we call an informal interview. So it's informal, formal, and then there should be a skills assessment component. Um, yeah. And I think the biggest part is that skills assessment. So anything field related what we recommend is you actually bring them to your office, pay them for a day or half a day and have them build or do something that they say they can do. Right. Right. So you're avoiding those, the, the making the wrong, wrong hiring choice. Cause everyone says, Oh yeah, I can, I can wire an electrical panel or I can, you know, plumbing. Yeah, no problem. I can, it's like, <laughs> great. Here you go. Here's some solder. Here's a pipe, you know, half a day. We'll pay you a hundred bucks. Have at it. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. I mean, I imagine that this is a, this is a tough, 
if you, like you said, if you do have a robust program and you're starting to get some candidates in, that's an important phase, right? Because then you gotta like quickly start figuring out who's who's my talent because they're looking for work, right? I mean, how much time do you got? You don't have that much time. So what does that informal interview process look like? What what kind of things are you asking or what do you what are you like trying to get to the next step? I guess I'm curious. So it's 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 like and, and Chris, I know I know loves this part too, but it's it's like speed to lead. So if you think of marketing, client comes in, you want to get to them right away. So it's reaching out right away, making contact, making sure that they have your basic qualifications. And you're doing this for two reasons. Number one is you want to be able to take anybody that is a gold nugget candidate, meaning they're like, oh my gosh, this person is absolutely amazing. They're exactly what we're looking for on paper. And you want to be able to have them skip some steps. You don't want to have them go through that whole process for exactly what you said, which is I might lose them. Right. It's like, oh, we got our first round interview, our second round interview. Oh, then we're going to have you. It's like, great. In a week and a half, they're hired because they're awesome. They right, just moved right, from right, XYZ. Right. So, right. so you want to get to them right away. You want to ask them a few basic questions that you we show you how to come up with, which is, you know, do you have a driver's license? Maybe one, um, you know, how long, uh, like b some basic nuggets of experience. That's all you're really looking for. And then mm -hmm. you're figuring out, okay, where do they fit? Is this a hot, warm or cold candidate? And right. then you can figure out where you move them in the next step. Do they follow the normal hiring path or do right. I literally bring them to the back of the line because they're, they're a dream candidate and I want to make sure that I move through quickly. Gotcha. No, that makes total sense. So I think we talked about this a little bit before where, you know, the industry, sometimes some of us can hire, not that great. We hire them and then we, you know, we, you know, give them a ride along. We give them some ideas of like what we are as a team. And then we cut them loose. And really that's like a lot of times the last time they meet the owner, the last time they meet this manager, they're just, they're done. So essentially the owner thinks I did it, we're done. So now we hired that position. Now I'm moving on back to focus on my other stuff. This is a key part. I mean, you're you're missing that step on making sure there's they can succeed. Yeah, for, for sure. sure. You have to be able to onboard them and train them and set them up for success, you know, and really have a process to bring them people in, make sure that you're providing them all the information that they, they start to feel the team, the culture immediately. Uh, it helps when you have a couple people, you can bring them in at the same time, have a training group where people are learning at the same time, and working together and, you know, hey, let's talk at night and make sure we go over some of this information. So tomorrow we really nail it. And what I learned working for the company that I work for is that we would be trained for a month before we'd ever go to a home. We would sit in, in the office, learn every day and just get used to the team, sit with the accounting department, sit with the the uh, training department, sit with the operations team, and we would go to each little part of the company, get to know everybody, feel like ingrained and get paid mm -hmm. for training. And then once they set us loose, we were like part of the team. Like we want to we want to pay back there the company for all, the, all they've invested up in us over this last month. We learned great things. We grew as people. And that's like setting up people for success from the get go and making them feel a part of the team before you set them loose into the, into the wild world there is key this to making yeah. sure people you know are really doing the best they can for you out there when you're not watching them and making sure they're doing the right thing when no one's looking too. you know setting them up for that that kind of feeling that they can have part of the team like that yeah yeah no it makes sense it makes sense i think that's a step that we i see a lot of failure in that step and i mean the fifth the fifth step you guys have here and i think i want to focus a little bit more on this one is the one that i think as an industry we've not done well at and it's retain and i I have a little part that I want you guys to focus on a little bit. And we talked about a little bit before we we've commoditized our, our industry, you know, very easily. You know, a lot of times we have this top talent, we, we send them loose. There's no culture feel there's, it's basically just a job. It's a paycheck and that's it. And we wonder why they go to another job and get cherry picked for a little bit more money. And, and so I talk a little bit about that retain piece and why we've kind of been terrible as an industry with this piece. It's my it's my favorite part, truly. I mean, because yeah. I almost think of it like imagine you're in the desert and you're tasked with getting a big old bucket of water and you have to find this water and you go through all this work and you do it and you feel great. And then you go pour this into your water holding bucket and it's got a leak. That's what I think some of us do in construction. We don't fortify our team. And I, I think that's so, so important. And it, and it comes from a couple of things. One of the biggest components is to first understand how they're feeling and for us we call this an honest employee audit and this is basically a technology that we have but in essence it's getting a clear understanding of 
what do they genuinely feel like? It's it's interesting, and Chris can can talk about this too. But basically, we've we've sat down with owners and we've said, you know, how do you feel about your team? Are that you do you think they're happy? Do you think they're and managers? Um, yeah, yeah, I think you know, I think we do a good job. They're not usually like I'm the best ever, but they're not like oh yeah, no, I've got a lot of work to do. And yeah. when when I've yet to get one of these back where I haven't personally looked at the results. It's a 10 scale typically. So it's anonymous. It, it goes to us essentially. And then, so that way there's an open channel of communication and we relay it back to the company, but right. where I literally haven't read it and gotten physical, like knots in my stomach because of some of the, like the, the twos and threes that you see where it's like, you know, do I feel like my work is valued and appreciated too? And you've got, you know, five to seven or 20 or 30 employees and you're seeing patterns and trends and you're going, Oh my gosh, if you lost these three or four or five people tomorrow, your business is like you're one aggressively smart and strategic company who wants to poach your people away from everything you've wor worked for vanishing. Right. And so, you know, we, we have to really, really understand the importance of this. And it's it, I had a mentor of mine years ago and he said nothing, nothing changes until the unsaid is spoken. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. such a powerful, powerful piece when it comes to retention, because there's so much. No, nobody ever, and I'm sure you can. We can all relate to this, uh, Chris. Especially, we've talked about this before. But nobody quits the day they quit. We have to know this as business owners. We have to know this as managers. Nobody quits the day they quit. Where it's a slow process. Where you're like, I'm not happy. I don't like this. And then it's that one thing they say, or as a manager, the one thing the boss does, and you're like, I'm done. I've had it. Right. Yeah, and yeah. we and we analyze that one little moment. So we're like, okay, what took place directly before John quit? Yeah, yeah, and it's right. like. John quit over the course of six months. It was when he didn't get a, 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 a phone call or any acknowledgement on his birthday. And when he was late because his wife or was in labor and he didn't tell you because you don't care as a company. And he was an hour late that day and you just yelled at him and didn't ask what he, what he understood. Or, you know, it, it's it, like there's all those pieces. And so when we take the time to really understand what our team is thinking and again, this is this all sounds very theoretical. It's like, yeah, that sounds great, but we have a process for it, the honest employee audit where it's literally we send it, we get it back, we show you. But in essence, the core thing as a business owner or manager we need to know and think about is are we genuinely taking the time to understand how they feel? That's the first part because we got to know where we are. And right. and once we do that, then it's how do we increase happiness? How do we increase for two reasons? And here's what's beautiful, Jeremy, and you 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 led up to this perfectly is that we want to get back to a conversation of employee maximization. And the reason we don't have this conversation is because we spend so much time thinking about, here's the paradigm in construction. I don't have enough people, right? If I have a missing person, that's a 0% output. Right. So I'm happy now as a business owner or manager to have a 40% output. Right. When, when I said earlier, the modern day goal rush, the modern day gold rush is getting every single person on the team to output at 100%. Well, how do we do that? We understand what makes them happy. We truly care. The, the amount of the amount of team members who who will stay with the company because they understand that company understands them. I've done this. I've literally done interviews uh, when we were building out the course. I've done thousands of them. It you know what fascinates me when I talk to somebody who will never leave their company, they cite examples of what that company did. They yeah. go, they'll say, no amount of money will take me away from this company. I said, you sure? You're not? Are you open? To a meeting can i meet with you no no right. i can't they, they, they my, my manager was there when i had my baby i, I mean they've done everything for me they helped me they co-signed on my mortgage they, they anytime i've ever had an issue they've they've handled it and so i've had literally i'm not exaggerating hundreds of those conversations and so yeah. the common thread is my company understands and listens Okay. And then not only do they do that, but then they do these these small other things to make me feel special. They'll they'll acknowledge me on my birthday. Um one thing you can do is, uh, and, and we've done this and, and talk about it, but you can have little poker chips made up with your company logo, and then you can design a wheel. And we have this at, at DeBar Masonry, and we've, we've shown how to do this. And, and But essentially, all you do is you have a bunch of small prizes, little things, you know, the $10, 7 11 gift card. You might have one big prize that's like, you know, 200, like it's not money driven. And yeah. anytime somebody does something good in your company, you give out these, these uh, uh, little poker chips. Right. Yeah. Hey, great job showing up late. Great. 
and you you can price it if you're a smaller company and, and you're financially concerned about the implications you can price all these very low to a point where you can hand them out for any time somebody does something good yeah. but yeah. you know it's not it's the same concept it's not none of this is is per se rocket science it's just how do i do it where do i do it and frankly none of us were taught this i mean i grew up where you know i used to mix oh. mortar and if it was too oh. wet they throw it off the scaffolding i'm sure you can relate <laughs> to some of these stories you know <laughs> exactly exactly no i mean i think you're totally right i mean the culture piece is my favorite because you know we've gotten away as an industry with such a toxic gruff no reward business and and you know it all comes down to people and that's what i love about what i'm doing at, with us construction zone is all about people like th they're people they, of course they want to be rewarded they want to be patted on the back i don't care if they're they look gruff or they're big or they're or they're manly nah it doesn't matter they want to be told that they did a good job. They want to be told in front of their peers. All mm -hmm. these, these are just, it's just human nature stuff that we think if we, re, if we reward them in that way, they're going to work less hard when it's the exact opposite. Yep. You reward them, they're going to work hard. You know what I mean? And, and so I speak to that a little bit. Why, why are we, why are we not figuring that part out? Yeah. Everyone wants to feel acknowledged and heard. And those yeah. are the two things that are always low when we do these surveys. They don't feel heard or they don't feel like their voice helps the company or they don't feel like they're part of the growth of the company. And right. those are the ones where like it's it's not hard to listen to someone. You just have to put the time in and make the effort to actually right. sit with people. And I right. think, you know, growing the team is important, too. But growing the individuals is important. Some of the best things I had at, at my old company was that they would give us a book, like a self-help book kind of thing. And, and right. I would never buy a self-help book. I'm thinking, hey, I got it all covered, you know. But I get a self-help book and then I read it. And then we have a discussion about it a month later, you know, 20 of yeah. us in a room when we talk about it and we get open about it and our feelings. And we right. grow as individuals. And as we grow it as individuals, together, we grow as a team. And, and just putting that little bit of effort, putting a, you buy 30 books, what does 30 books cost when you you know your team is going to grow with you and work harder and gain knowledge from that experience, right. not just totally. from the book, the experience of doing it together. So that yeah. ongoing education, ongoing team building, uh, events, you know, taking people out, showing them a good time and just really putting money back into the, the team and not just the business is really, really important. Yeah. Again, investing in people. It seems, again, it's not rocket science, like you said, Matt, but we just get so in our habits and so used to what culture we had. And I think that's what's cool about that survey is like, hey, you don't know where you don't know where to go until you know where you're at. Right. So let's figure out where we're at mm -hmm. and let's, I'll take offense to it. Let's let's figure out where we're at and then let's implement some steps to, to get to that better place. I think 100%. that that phase right there, that survey phase. People are afraid of it, right? They're like, I don't want to even know. Like, the, I don't want to know. <laughs> Can we skip yeah. that, that, please? It's like going to the doctor, you know? You, you're scared of the results, you know? But yeah. you know, once you get those results, you're going to have to put some work in to make, to yeah. make it. And when you're starting a hiring campaign, I always tell people, it's like going to the doctor. you got to get a physical before you run a marathon to make sure your heart don't explode. So right. let's, let's do a competitor audit. Let's see what the market in our area is like. Let's do right. a... a, a, a um, employee audit just to see where our in inward market is like right. what's going on in both of those and where we can meet in the middle before we even start this campaign so we cover all those bases and we don't you know our heart doesn't explode halfway through from the, the stress of it all right like totally. let's figure out what we're doing right and wrong and then use that to move forward and get some more people in here totally. and totally. the biggest the biggest objection to all this that we typically get is you're saying i'm a business owner i'm a business manager i don't have time and when you look at and when you look at if you the study of of changing habits or human behavior, right? We look at its replacement. Like you use the example of like quitting smoking. They say, you know, if you right. give somebody something else to hold or something else, like you're replacing the habit. And so I, I look at this the hiring and retention side, and I say, all we have to do is is take a few hours a week of your focus on sales and transition right. that into. I'm not asking. I'm not saying that you need to take more time. I'm saying take some of the focus from sales and marketing. And dedicate a little bit more to hiring and retention. Ask right. yourself to take 30 minutes a week with your team and sit down and say, how did we make everyone on the team feel better? Because if you can do this, we got to understand, I think the best way to the best way to, to think about this, simply put, is if we if if you make one sale in a company, think of all the human touch points in this, right? So I, a lead comes in, somebody answers the phone. Somebody schedules a salesperson to go out. Salesperson goes out. There's somebody who's doing the physical work. 
somebody who's doing billing and invoicing, you have all these, so you have seven touch points, right? Six, seven touch points for every one sale. So borrow a little bit of the time and the energy you spend on sales and marketing and invest it in this area. And you will see exponential growth because that one hire might be with your company 20 years. That right. sales done in, in a week, a month, a year, depending on the company and how big you are. So it's it, it blows right. my mind that we don't focus on. Imagine that. Think of a hire as a sale. I make a sale. I bring in a, a new leader, a new project manager, a new estimator. I've made a sale that reaps rewards for my company for right. 20 right. years if I'm doing these things right. Yeah, it's huge. It's huge. Well, guys, I think that this program is very well thought out. I, I want to compliment you guys on the, the, the details. I think it's exactly what, what, what we need as an industry. So, you know, any last parting words before we get into your fantastic offer here? No, I just, I'm just grateful for everybody that tuned in and listened. I think when we, when it came time to put this course together, um, I went to a, a, one of the biggest course makers in the country and they said, you know, I don't, I don't think contractors will take a course. And every time I attend something like this and I see people that are innovators that want to learn, that want to consume, like, I believe this industry is ready for a jump. And I'm just, I'm genuinely excited for, for who's here and what you're doing, Jeremy, and what we get to be a part of and you inviting us because I, I, I don't think people understand the construction industry like those of us that are in it. And I think it's a special time. It's a special, special opportunity. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt, guys. I, again, I, I appreciate you guys being here. Um, I want to see if I can uh, uh, do something here. And can you see the, the screen there, Matt and Chris? Hey, yep. that looks familiar. Yeah. So I wanted you guys to introduce this a little bit. Um, now, obviously, these are these are the, the things we just talked about, you know, the, the clear understanding, the find, vet, hire, retain. But I really want you guys to focus on this last section, which I think is just is super awesome. So talk to it a little bit. Yeah. So we, we put together a special offer for you inviting us here uh, to kind of launch the course and get in in front of people that want to learn, that are action takers, that want to grow. And, uh, and so anybody here that's listening, that stayed till the end, that, that wants to develop in the space, um, we've put together a 50% discount. So we have the code there. Um, the link is going to be somewhere here. I don't know if they yeah, can click we'll on it in the chat right now on LinkedIn, but we'll also, yeah, if you, uh, if you guys have, actually, it's kind of a strange link, isn't it? We'll just put it in the chat right now for those who are on LinkedIn. And we'll also be emailing it out to everybody so that everybody has this piece as well as the link so that everyone knows how to get it um yes. if all else fails you know you always have um me jeremy at usconstructionzone.com what's the best way to get a hold of you guys you can email me chris at the contractorconsultants.com okay and I, i'm happy to speak to anybody about anything involved in here i'm happy to hop on a quick call if anyone has more questions or anything else that we can help with, that's that's what we're here for. It's to help. All right. Well, thank you guys for being here. It was a wealth of information. I think everyone's going to take something from this and be able to use it wisely in our business. And honestly, it's such an important subject matter. And, you know, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays to you guys. Thanks for being here. And we'll be having more talks. We'll figure out some more ways to partner up in the future. So thanks again for being here, guys. Awesome. Thanks, thank everybody. You, Happy holidays. Right. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Thank you, guys. Well, thank you guys for being here on another episode of Construction Executives Live. I am your host, Jeremy Owens. Again, if you have anything that you need from me, if you have any future uh, topics of interest or some people you think I need to reach out to, Jeremy at usconstructionzone.com. Again, thank you for being here. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Reach out to somebody today. Um, that's your homework, and we'll see you next time.